So when I was in middle school, now there was something that you need to understand about. There's something you need to understand about when I, uh, about me when I grew up. Now, two things that are really important. That if you know these things, this whole story makes sense. One is that my parents, during especially during the summer, uh, my parents were always. They essentially never wanted me in the house. Ever wanted me in the house. They essentially like from the moment that I woke up, my mom would say go. Now, looking back, I kind of wonder, I'm like, man, I don't know if they liked me very much. Because they were always telling me to get out of the house. And literally, I would be out of the house, like middle school, I'd be out of the house from the moment I woke up, I'd come home for lunch, maybe, maybe I'd find lunch somewhere in town, like at a friend's house, and then I would come home for dinner, right? But I was always out. And we were always riding our bikes somewhere, doing something, going somewhere. I mean, there would be times where we would be miles from our home, right? Like, I, I probably would never let my 12-year-old do that, like just miles away and like with no cell phone, no like, hey, where are you at? Check in, nothing. It was just get out of the house and come back in the evening sometime, right? And uh, sometimes like my parents would just be like shouting out the back door like we lived in a little house in the prairie, which I don't know why I said that because you guys don't know what that show was. Anyway, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. The other thing is, is that I had a very heavy conscience. Now, for those of you that don't know what that means, when I did something wrong, I would feel this pain within my stomach. Like, I would literally have pains inside, like deep down into my stomach area. I would feel this pain when I did something I knew I shouldn't have done. Now, two things are going on, right? One is I'm always outside trying to figure out what I want to do with my time because I didn't have all the video games that maybe some of us have now. And two is that I would always feel this feeling inside of me whenever I did something wrong. So we would get bored and we would come up with all sorts of interesting things to do. And this particular day, about four of us were together. Some of these friends were my friends for years, like starting in elementary school all the way up into high school. So we were close. We all lived in the same neighborhood. And we had this idea, what if, Again, we were bored. Dumb idea. I'm going to preface. I'm going to. I'm going to like preface the story with the idea that this was dumb. Don't ever do this. All right. We had this idea that maybe we should go to the park, and and we would be at the park regularly. But this particular day, we wanted to start a fire, and so we brought all of the materials we would need for a fire, like like lighter fluid, not not gasoline. That would have been a really great idea, but it was it was lighter fluid and matches. And, and we had some rakes, and we raked up a, a massive pile of leaves and twigs. And then we were just like dousing that thing with all sorts of lighter fluid. And then what it, you know, we'd light it, and just boom, the thing goes up. And it's massive. And we're like, this is the coolest moment of my life. Right? Like I had hit the peak. Right? It's amazing. Right? And we're watching this thing, but at some point in time, I'm like, if this doesn't go down, like, this is not good. Like, if this doesn't, like, go out, like, there's something bad is going to happen. Now, thankfully, nothing did, and it slowly went out. But the reality is, is that, that something bad could have happened, right? Like, trees could have got lit on fire. It could have spread. It was a fairly wooded park. There were houses nearby. Like, it could have gone wrong. Now, how many of you, how many of you in this room... Have a, have a circle of friends that you do life with regularly. Maybe it's one, maybe it's two, maybe it's five or six or whatever that number is, but you have a crew that you roll with, right? Here's a passage in the Bible. You can put your hands down. But in Proverbs chapter 13, it's something really simple, really short, but there's this man in the scriptures in the Old Testament that was described to be the wisest man that ever lived. Right, he's the wisest person up to that point that had ever lived. There was people that would travel from all over the, 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 the surrounding part of that world to come and listen to something he had to say. They would seek out his advice. Right, we're talking about this is the man that says this one little statement. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, he says, Walk with the wise and become wise. So essentially, hang out with the wise, the wise people in your life, and you will become wise. But for a companion of fools, so someone who hangs out with people that, that at least Solomon describes as a fool, but maybe we could translate that differently, and we could just say those that would encourage us to do things that were maybe inappropriate or not right or dumb like I did when I started a fire in the park, right? 
And so Solomon is saying that we will do what? When the people we hang out with, if they're wise, they'll encourage us to do right, and if they're not, they'll encourage us to do wrong. It's simple stuff. Solomon is basically saying that we have a choice of what kind of person that we want to hang out with. Now, going back to middle school, the same group of friends that I hung out with. Now, I remember in the, in the beginning of my story, I shared there was two things, right? One, that I was always forced to be outside. We got bored, bless you. We got bored and we did dumb things because we were just, we got creative. But the other thing is, is that when I did stuff that was wrong, I felt pain, physical pain from it. When I was younger, when I was like probably fifth grade, uh, we, again, we liked to be on our bikes all the time. We thought it was cool to, I don't know, maybe, maybe this is still cool. I have no idea. Probably not. But, uh, so on your bike, you have two tires, and on those tires have valve stems, right, where you pump up the tire, right? And on the valve stem, you have a cap that you screw on, and it's normally just a little black plastic cap. Now, growing up, we, were, we took pride in our bikes because our bikes were what, what we did. We were always on them. And so we would like work on them, we'd find parts, like we'd find parts. I know, I just, I lived this horrible life. But anyway, so there was this thing that we called chromies, all right? Basically chrome valve caps. And there was this truck about a block away from my house. And I saw that he had chrome valve caps, what we would call chromies, on his wheels. And so I, would, I rolled up next to the truck on the outside of the truck that was facing away from the house, right? Like I thought I was smart. And I took the caps off and I put them on my bike and I took off. Now here's the deal. Here's the deal though. I felt what? I felt pain. Right? I felt physical pain from this. Now not right away, but like but like later on that evening, I like couldn't fall asleep. And the only thing that I could do to relieve the pain is do what? What do you think I had to do? I had to what? Well, yeah, but that wasn't what I did. What I needed to do, because it didn't always translate like that into every situation, right? Because I didn't always steal something. But what I needed to do was confess. And so I would tell my parents what I did. And then I would feel better. So what did my dad do when I said, hey, dad, I did this thing. I took these chrome caps from this truck. What do you think he did? He no, he didn't punch me in the throat. Right? It's not like it's WWF in my house or WWE, right? It was like or MMA, or whatever your, your flavor is, but here's the deal. He made me go back to the house and tell. And I hand it, so I go and I knock on the door and I, I'm like, sorry sir, but I took your chrome valve caps from your truck. So this one night, a group of my friends were all staying at the house. We're in middle school, I think eighth grade. And uh, we, we, it was like the, my parents went to bed and we had already during the day worked out this scenario with some friends of ours. There were some girls, I know, like we should have done that, right? Uh, we talked to girls. But anyway, so we had already worked it out with some of our friends that we were going to meet them in downtown Royal Oak, because that's where I grew up. Actually, I grew up in Royal Oak, but we were going we to ride our bikes downtown Royal Oak, meet up at this restaurant, and just hang out at like midnight. Right? So we snuck out of the house, snuck out of the house. We rode our bikes to the, to the restaurant, and we hung out for a couple hours. Right? Harmless. Got on our bikes, came back to the house, snuck back in, and went to bed. Now, here's the thing. Like, my friends, they're all snoring away and fast asleep. And what's wrong with me? What's happening to me right now? Pain. I have physical pain. And I'm just like, wide awake like this. Just thinking to myself, what am I going to do? And I lie there on the floor in physical pain all night long. Because I didn't want to tell them, because my friends were there, and I was like, if I rat them out in the process of ratting myself out, like that would not be good, because I didn't want them to not like me anymore, and not want to hang out with me anymore. And so I waited till the morning, and then they left, and then I told my mom, and I was like, last night we did this, because I had this pain, and it was the only way to get rid of this pain. But here's the deal, guys. Here's the deal. What happened? What ha I got in trouble. What, here's the deal. What about the others? What did you do? They throat punched me. All right. <laughs> this, is what, this is where we're headed. This is where we're headed. Fast forward a few years, I find myself in high school.
You fast forward just a few years, I find myself in high school, and I find myself in a situation where, where the trends weren't changing. And what I mean by that, what I mean by the trend is not changing is that I continued to do these things that we would collectively come up with as a group of friends that were not healthy for me. We continued to make choices that were not good, not healthy for me, for the individual, for the group. We continued to break the rules, bend the rules, do what we wanted, and eventually I had to, I had, I, I had faced with a choice. Will I continue to live like this, and who knows what happens, or will I make a choice and turn from that behavior? And the hard thing for that, in that, in that moment, in that choice, is that it was, it was hard, right? It was hard to say, like, if I was going to turn away from that lifestyle, from like continuing to get in trouble and doing all these things and being disrespectful to people and breaking rules. If I was going to turn from that, I had to turn from my friends that were causing some of those choice, those behaviors to take place. And when I did, there was a group of people at my church that I was also friends with that I was able to lean into in those relationships. So here's the deal, and I want you to think about this, all right? All right, gentlemen, I want you to think about this. If it wasn't for the people in my life when I was in high school, when I chose to walk away from the behaviors that was pulling me down a path that I shouldn't have been going down, when I, when I walked away from all of the behaviors that was causing me physical pain, right? When I eventually chose to walk away from that, I had people in my life that were there to encourage me. How many of you in the room have ever been in a situation with a friend that you have felt jealous of? Like you felt at some moment, it's okay, I have too. Like seriously, like there are times in my life when I've seen people, they've had this thing, they've been able to do this thing, they've had this position, whatever it may be, they're the starter on the team, they're whatever, but we found ourselves in a place of feeling jealous. Now there's this story, I want you to catch this. There's this young man in the Bible that his dad is king. And when your father's king, what are you owed at some point in your life, especially when dad passes away? Money. To be king, right? So there's this king, and there's this young man named Jonathan, and his dad is king, and he's expecting to be king someday. But what happens? God told this, told this prophet to go to this home and to find a new king. And that's when they found this young man named David. So, so now the people of Israel know that David is to be king someday, and King Saul knows it, and King Saul's angry over it. He gets jealous, and he wants to kill him. Jonathan, Jonathan, who should be king someday, who should be jealous of David, is not. And in that moment when King, when king Saul wanted to kill David, what did Jonathan do? He had his back. He had his back. No, he didn't king King Saul. That would be a different story. That one wasn't on VeggieTales. I'm sorry. <laughs> but when, when Jonathan could have felt jealousy, he didn't. He had this friendship with David that he, that he, he had this friendship with David that was so pure and so good and so healthy that he had his back. The beautiful part about that story is that wouldn't it be amazing that, we, that someone would have our back like that? So tonight, the challenge for you, and I want you to think about this. I want you to close your eyes. And I'm going to ask a couple of questions. The first one is, is who are you spending most of your time with? Don't say anything out loud. Don't giggle next to your friend. Like, this is that moment in your life that, that there's this dude on stage that is asking you for just a moment to, to lean into being a bit more mature. And I'm going to treat you like I treat a high school student just down the hallway in the chapel. And I'm going to ask you the question tonight, who are you spending most of your time with? And are these people, so now that you, you, you can visualize the people that you spend most of your time with, the following question is, are these people helping you to be wise? Or are they encouraging you to be foolish? Don't answer it out loud. I want you to think about that. I want you to sit in that for a minute. The people that you spend most of your time with, are these people encouraging you to be wise? Or are they encouraging you to make foolish choices? And I'm not asking you 
you can open your eyes, but I want you. I want your attention. I want you. To, I want. To, I want you to look right at my eyes. I want to see your eyes. I'm not asking you tonight to walk away from friends, but this is what I am asking you: Is there someone at your school, on a sports team that you're on as well? Is there someone? Is there one person who could influence your life in a positive way if you were better friends with them? I want your eyes, not your noises. Is there someone you know that you can think of right now in this moment that could be a positive influence in your life if only you were a little bit better friends with them? And so tonight I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that, and I want you to think about what does it take for me to grow in that relationship with this one person that could potentially influence me in a positive way. Let me, let me finish the story for you before we head to small group. If it wasn't for those group of friends when I was in high school, I wouldn't be here today. And I know that for a fact. I'm not saying a lie. I'm saying I wouldn't be here on this stage today doing what I do for the last almost 20 years, leading and teaching and, and, being, and doing youth ministry like I do. I wouldn't be doing any of that. I wouldn't be serving Jesus in the capacity that I serve Jesus if I didn't have those people in my life. So what I'm saying to you, and I know this is hard to believe because you're in middle school and you're thinking, I have so many years ahead of me, but here's the reality. That the choices you make now will impact tomorrow. And so could you walk into a relationship? Could you step into a relationship that you know of this person right now in your, in your, in your schools, in your families, in your teams, whatever, whatever that, wherever that person is? What would it take for you to lean into that relationship? What would it take for you to take a step towards that person? Because I believe that relationship will move you forward in a positive way, in a way that God is hoping and longing for you to step into. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this night. God, I thank you for this group of 6th, 7th, and 8th graders.